Hey everyone, it's Anna from PNW Blanks and Sublimation, and this is part two of wedding gift crafting. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, earlier today I posted a different video of sublimation on a sweater blanket. I am going to a wedding this weekend, and I decided to do a little bit of sublimation crafting uh, to make some wedding gifts. So I made a sublimation blanket. Uh, on a sweater blanket that we have available for, uh, they're on their way. So it's not a pre-order, but it's kind of a wait list. Uh, so those are available on the site now. And as of April 22nd, 2021, if you're watching this at a later date, they might already be here and ready to ship. So go ahead and check that out on the website. I'll post the link in the description below. Uh, so wedding gift crafting part two is going to be sublimating on two coffee mugs. I made some cute designs uh, to go on some coffee mugs with a picture of the happy couple and their last name. So Mr. Crossley and Mrs. Crossley. And since it's been a while since we did a how to change your attachments video, I thought I would just start off with the PNW Blanks multifunction drinkware press already having the 20 ounce skinny drinkware attachment uh, installed. <laughs> and I'm going to switch out to the 11 to 15 ounce standard mug attachment. So all you have to do is undo these four screws here and it's actually really simple to change out these attachments. So you just undo the screws and then you want to also make sure to uh, undo the cable from the control box. This here and then it just slides right out so just like that we have no more 20 ounce attachment and we will slide in our 11 to 15 ounce mug attachment and just line it up with the holes and plug it in. Make sure not to lose your screws. And turn it on. So we're going to cut out our designs while we're waiting for that to heat up. So I have the designs here that match the blanket that I created in the other video. So if you haven't watched that, make sure to go ahead and check that out. And I'll go ahead and 
wait for the press to heat up, cut out my designs, and then I'll be back. Okay, so the press is heated up. It's uh, at a target temperature of 360 degrees, printing temperature of 365 degrees, and a time of 135 seconds. Uh, the ceramic mugs need to be cooked longer. They, in an oven, they are cooked 12 to 15 minutes, and in the press, they are cooked for a little over two minutes. Yeah, sorry, I had to do the math in my head there. So about two and a half minutes uh, for the ceramic mugs. So it takes definitely not as long as the oven at all. Uh, so you can actually still crank these out pretty quickly. I went ahead and already adjusted my pressure and I also went ahead and grabbed a bucket with lukewarm, uh, basically room temperature water. And we're going to need this after, uh, after pressing the tumbler, we're going to unwrap the tumbler, sorry, the coffee mug. Can you tell I'm used to making tumblers? <laughs> So we're going to take the design off of the coffee mug and then place it into the water and that's going to stop the, uh, basically stop it from cooking. So if you don't do this, then it can actually, the design will keep transferring onto the mug and it can overcook. So it can result in some discoloration of your, uh, of your design. So we don't want to do that. So lukewarm water, don't do cold water. Uh, if it's like ice cold water, then that can cause the ceramic to crack. So you don't want to do that. And if it's too hot of water, then it's not going to, um, it's not going to complete its purpose. So I have my design all cut out uh, and I'm going to go ahead let me make sure I'm on frame there. So I put the cup upside down. Let me move this over just a little bit so you can see. So I put the cup upside down uh, and then put my transfer on. And this is just to help line it up. This is what I do. This is not like the way to do it. It's just what works for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then... I tape it, move some of this stuff around, and then I put a piece of tape here on this side, and then a piece of tape, make sure that's still lined up, and make sure that it's nice and tight all the way around the cup on the top and the bottom. So just like with the tumblers, you want to make sure you have a nice tight seal and add a piece of tape to the other side. And I have a confession to make. This is literally the second coffee mug, ceramic coffee mug that I have ever made. The first one that I've done was in an oven. So we're going to see how this turns out. And, uh, luckily, you know, I think I'm going to put another piece of tape just in the corners here, just in case, uh, we're going to see how it turns out and hopefully it turns out well, if not, I have some more coffee mugs, so I'll just continue making them until it does turn out. <laughs> um, and hope, yeah, like I said, hopefully it turns out. Second one ever, first one ever in the press. In the other video that we did on 11 ounce coffee mugs, Elena made it in the press. So she is more experienced at doing coffee tumblers than I am. And we're going to see how this turns out. So. We have, I just did an extra piece of tape on top. It may or may not be needed. We will see. Um, but it's nice and tight on there. There's no 
gap or anything around our design. So I think we're good to go. Uh, let me get this back centered in the frame for you. And wish me luck. <laughs> so we're going to place the coffee cup in here just like that with the handle facing up. And then we're going to see how, actually, we're going to have the handle facing about like that. There we go. So you just want to make sure that the attachment completely covers your design. And see, I may have made my transfer just a little bit too long. So I think what we're going to do is we're first going to do it this way and then similar to tumblers we're going to rotate it um this can easily be f solved with a shorter transfer but since it's already taped up and we're just gonna go ahead and test it out and see how it works so i have it in the middle of my attachment and i have the handle facing more toward me go ahead and test that out and because we're going to rotate it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to let it go for the full 135 seconds. Maybe we'll do 100 seconds and then we'll rotate it a little bit so the handle's facing this way. And then we'll let it go for the remaining 35 seconds. We'll find out. So... While that gets um, back up to temperature, you'll see the temperature dropped. That's because the temperature of the ceramic mug is cooler, as explained in the other video that we did on ceramic coffee mugs. Uh, ceramic is cold. You put it into the press. Temperature is going to drop and on the press, and that's because both the press and the substrate have to reach the temperature for sublimation, uh, basically for the sublimation process to occur. So if you remember your science classes back in middle school, high school, possibly college, uh, a, you know, for a solid to become a, well, first a solid becomes a liquid and then it becomes a gas, but you want the solid to turn the solid ink from the transfer to turn into a gas and then it essentially dyes the substrate and that's why it's a permanent design. Once it's on there, it's completely permanent. So we have it at 365 degrees and then you'll see that it just started counting down. So for sublimation to happen, you need both heat and pressure, but it has to be at the correct temperature in order for it to happen it has to be hot enough. Otherwise, it's just going to remain a solid and not even transfer onto your substrate. So we'll be a little bit longer. And while I have you here, if you could see there's some tumblers and fun stuff in the background here, including these mason jar cups that we just got and I did press this mason jar using the 20 ounce skinny drinkware attachment and it just turned out so cute so these are mason jars I'm uh, going to be getting more of them in just because my co I showed my coworkers and they just went ballistic over them so I'm really excited with hopefully their popularity coming up in, you know, as it gets in more into summer, spring and summer. He said it's the perfect size for a mixed drink. So I'm going to have to come up with some, some fun designs for, for those. And like I said, we're just going to stop it at that 35 seconds and go ahead and rotate it, not that much, just so it covers the other side of the transfer. 
I probably, when I do the other, I do have a little bit of room here on my transfer. Um, I, not so much on this side, but on this side, I have a little bit more room, so I might just cut it a little bit. So on the second mug, that doesn't, we don't have to deal with that happening, the whole rotation process. So we'll let it go for 35 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and check it and see if it turned out at all, <laughs> which hopefully it did. I'm testing just as much as you're watching me test. <laughs> so we will, uh, we'll see how it turns out. Have a bunch of new Tumblr designs in the background there. These ombre tumblers are also super cute. I did a video on ombre tumblers that you don't actually need the full, you don't have to do a full wrap on them. Uh, it says, I'm so freaking amazing, and it has a little llama on the other side. Uh, because it's already, it has the ombre, it already has some color to it, so just slap a logo on there, or a design, or a wording, phrase, whatever you want, and you have a tumbler in seconds that you can sell. And let's go ahead and check that. So... I am going to, so you can see the design looks like it transferred pretty well, I'm hoping. Um, and we're going to go ahead and quickly remove that tape because, as mentioned before, that sublimation process is still occurring. And we're just going to peek at it a little bit, and that looks good. It looks a little bit blurry. Hmm. That's okay. Like I said, we're just testing. And this is where those tweezers that I mentioned in a different video would come in very handy. So you want to go ahead and quickly remove that and put it into the water to get that, stop that heat transfer. I didn't quite put enough water in this, so I'm gonna I'm just going to kind of slide it back and forth here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to hold it in here, so we'll just do it for a few seconds. <laughs> okay. Just enough to stop. Uh, and let's take a look. So, it actually did pretty well on this side. Uh, that fading is actually part of the design. So, yeah, it transferred really well. It turned out really cute. No ghosting on the top or the bottom. And then until we get to this side. So, yeah, that's cool enough to to touch there. So it did ghost on this side, unfortunately. Um, like I said, I'm going to trim the transfer. You can actually see right where I need to trim the transfer is about at that purple flower there. So I'll go ahead and just chop that right there. And that should even it out a little bit. I think if, because I had it this way, so it definitely got more time on the side. I think if I had left it in a little bit longer while it was facing this way, it would have actually been perfect. Uh, but it still turned out really cute. Colors look vibrant. No ghosting on the top or the bottom. Yeah, really happy with that. So my plan was to just do one mug um, and then do the other mug off camera. But maybe I will actually do the second mug. I'll trim the design and do the second one. Uh, it is going to be basically the same thing over again, but hopefully with a little bit better results. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that design and I'll be back. 
Okay, and I'm back, and I have my design all taped up. I did notice in this one, uh, in the first one we did, there was just a teeny bit of ghosting here in the corner. Um, and I just, so I just added another third piece of tape on the bottom there. So just one, two, three, and one, two, three, similar to a, uh, a tumbler. You don't have to tape the top, don't have to tape the bottom just those three well six pieces of tape three on each side so go ahead and put it in and make sure that the transfer is going to get fully pressed there which that looks like the sweet spot so i'm gonna go ahead and press it And as mentioned before, the temperature is going to drop until the mug and both the mug and the press reach the same temperature in order for the sublimation process to occur. And in order to, this is actually why we have two temperatures. Uh, so it can reach the desired temperature to produce optimum results for your transfer. While that's heating up, I actually mentioned earlier this is wedding crafting part two. Wedding crafting part one was a blanket, so I thought I'd go ahead and show that to you. Uh, if you're, you haven't caught the other video and you like this blanket and you want to see how it was done, then go ahead and check out the other videos on YouTube. So same last name and then their first, their first names and their wedding date. Is on there so trying to get it on frame and also as far away as my arms can reach there so you can see nice vibrant colors great detailed design you can see how well that came out with the design with the flower the tropical flowers and pattern their wedding is uh, Hawaiian tropical themed so I thought, how about a Hawaiian tropical blanket and matching mug set for a wedding gift? All right, so it's almost there. It's at 360. It needs to go ahead and get to 365. So while we're waiting for that, let me go ahead and uh, what else can I show you? <laughs> Uh, let's see, I guess I can show you a couple other products that we have. Um, I made this tumbler on a different video, so if you didn't see that, go ahead and check that out. Uh, this is a one of our blue textured glitter tumblers, and you can see that sparkle is just unreal. It's so pretty. In person it's even more gorgeous I purposely did a kind of a more colorful uh, animal print pattern for this just to see how the colors would show up on the blue glitter uh, we have these also in silver gold pink and the blue and not to be confused with the um, the holographic, we call them holographic, some people call them rainbows, some people call them shimmer. Uh, I don't know if I have any of those within reach. Uh, I have it in a wine cup. I'll show you that. So this is the holographic. That's the term that PNW Blanks uses for this kind of uh, coating and coloring on our sites. So these are holographic because they have that, you know, holographic glitter look to them. Uh, we also, we do not call them shimmers like some other places because we have actual shimmer tumblers. See if I can find one. 
this one so you can actually see it has a very subtle you see that very subtle shimmer it's like they used a a fine glitter extra fine glitter coating when making it so that those are our shimmer tumblers and I totally forgot to do my heat glove here uh, chatting so again I'm going to go ahead and remove the design quickly but also not burning ourselves <laughs> Get that design and dunk. I'm not really sure how long to do this. Uh, so we'll just do it for you know about 30 seconds, just enough to kind of get that and stop it from cooking. Make sure it doesn't get overcooked. And let's take a look. All right, that looks awesome. Again, no ghosting on the top or the bottom. Looks great. Yeah, that looks amazing. There is just a teeny bit of ghosting here and here. So I probably didn't trim it quite far enough. Or what we can do is you can see that black color it's not overcooked or anything it's it's a true black so we could probably even uh rotate it just a little bit it's probably because these mugs are quite large they're the 15 ounce larger mugs i don't have a 12 ounce to show you in comparison so you're just gonna have to take my word for it that <laughs> it's a 15 ounce coffee mug uh so i'm thinking maybe for these, you might just have to rotate it a little bit and then press it for maybe another uh, 30, 45 seconds or so to stop that from happening. Or you just trim your design accordingly. So I could even have probably moved this over just a tad. Maybe I didn't have it completely centered and then that would have alleviated that. But overall, I think that this turned out really great and both coffee mugs combined with the you know it has the mr and mrs combined with the blanket is an awesome wedding gift uh if you were selling them i mean you can easily sell this as a set for gosh at least 50 dollars if not more for two mugs and a blanket um, I mean, people, people pay really good money for wedding gifts. So take it from me because people gave us wedding gifts last year and we were a little bit blown away by people's generosity. So I think definitely, um, around $50 is probably a good price point for that, which is an excellent profit when you take into the, to account the price of, uh, coffee mugs are super inexpensive. The blanket is also inexpensive and I mean ink and transfer paper is very minimal as well. And you do it in just a couple minutes. So I think this video will probably end up being about 20 minutes. If I wasn't jibber jabbering on then <laughs> you could probably make the whole thing in less than an hour. So I don't know. Um, I'd love to get paid 50 bucks an hour. <laughs> I don't get that at my day job. That's for sure. So obviously uh, taking into account materials and everything else, it is less than $50 an hour, but that was just kind of a, a little joke. So I hope you enjoyed wedding crafting part two with PNW blanks and sublimation. If you liked this video, please thumbs up. Please share with your friends. Visit our Facebook group, PNW Blanks and Sublimation on Facebook. And also, uh, 
if you want to purchase the PNW Blanks multifunction drinkware press, you can find them at the websites that I will link in the description below. I hope you all have a great night.